Bass and Bonsai, back in the house. Unfortunately, we always got to come back to the house. We can't stay out on the water permanently, right? So I want to talk about a few things to do with swim baits. Aye. And then more swim bait talk. And then just on what I got from Bass Pro Shop. But I had uh, a couple of you guys had asked about this bait. Uh, one called it by name. I didn't even know what it was. It's a knockoff of, I guess, the, uh, I want to say Mystic. Bellum, but the Bellum 245 or 300 is what I heard it called. That's why I said Evergreen, but I don't think Evergreen made this bait. Or the, what this is a knockoff of. So I do have two of these, but I have not fished these yet. These didn't make it out on the water because I'm pretty sure these may not float. And I didn't want to throw off a bunch of baits, even though they're only like $17, $19 baits. So these have yet to been tried. That real big carp one was the very first one I got. It's yet to been uh, tried. So to wrap it up, uh, if you guys remember right, I tried these. Now, what I think I figured out today was that that size, this size here, is the biggest size I've found anyway on AliExpress. They're like the 200 uh, millimeter. They're basically a copy of the K9, the Clash 9 from DRT, right? Now we found the way I like to run them is just like this, with that tail, the smooth side up, the fins on the bottom, but it kind of looks like the water comes like this. If you put that uh, bill, the lip in, then uh, you flip it around, then that way. They have different, like, uh, I finally went ahead and watched a couple different videos on these. So they have different, like, uh, modes they call them or whatever but i've only found two ways that i like this bait or any of the other sizes which is just like this is the way i like it the best that's how we've caught our one big bass we've caught on these uh swim baits so far or put that in it flip it around and then you kind of have like a pretty uh good resistance uh harder thumping uh crank type bait now we haven't waited any of these the ones that float i plan on waiting them all what i want to do is i want these baits to actually what i want is kind of like a slow float i don't want a slow sink like if anything just in case i throw them off at some point i want them to you know if i pull them down or whatever they uh yes thank you very much olivia i'm aware of that uh when we get to clear water, I'm going to do some of that. Uh, we... Now you got me distracted. What was I saying? I have also been looking, and me, we as in me, that is roughly the size and the weight and all of that of the K9, right? And how to run it. Now... This one is limited to how many modes or profiles or how many different ways you can configure it. Because as of right now, as far as I know, there's only one size lip. Okay. So the other ones, I believe the Tiny Clash and the K9 all have, you can order some different size lips. Now you could always modify one or you could take this. This is actually a very pretty straight uh, piece of plastic material it's not like lexan but it's pretty hard i imagine you could take a piece of lexan kind of make your own bill configurations just to play with you know and if you're worried about losing these i did manage to break one already i can't remember which one it was but uh here it is and these do not all interchange with each other on some of the ones so i tried sticking that i don't know i broke it no big deal, there's a spare, and honestly, I think I'm going to end up using most all of these like this anyway. It's a possibility the smallest one I may use just as like a crank. So, I would put this thing, and that's the way I like it, just like that. But I would flip that around, put the bill in it, and just use it as a small kind of cranky thing. But honestly, I don't think I'm going to end up using these. These are going to end up being... Uh, for kids to use or who knows what or I may just list a lot of stuff I have that I don't like right off the bat for sale and it's not that I don't like the bait I don't like the size in my opinion I'm going big or I'm going home when it comes to swim bait so you're probably gonna be th seeing me throwing these size swim baits uh, and you know still this size swim bait like that even though it's a short one that's still a pretty big that thing has my thumb like get off Ow, there's sharp hooks. I can't get it off. That was stuck in. Not barbed deep. 
But so some of these little ones, I'm going to probably uh, weed right back out of my arsenal before I even worry about fishing. Because I don't know, I just, uh, after just a few days of fishing with these kind of things, uh, at first you're kind of intimidated by the size. And like, oh, I don't even know if that's going to get hit or not. But then when you realize when the fish are on, that's also when and where I will and won't be using these. So this bait right here, and let me find it. Oh boy, where did it go? Okay, so I'm pretty sure that, well, I'm almost 100% sure that's the closest you can come to the K9. But then the Tiny Clash, from what I can figure out, it is the closest to this one. So these come, and I measured them. If you didn't watch that other video, go watch it. But you basically, on the listings, they're in millimeters. So you have the big one, which those two down there are 200 millimeter, 115 grams roughly. The littlest one that I just showed you, uh, 135 millimeters, I can't remember the weight, but they're pretty small. You can uh, you can throw these with almost anything. I could throw that on my Tetons uh, light action rod all day long. I wouldn't have an issue. Like, I don't think it would break. So then you got these two sizes in between those two, and they are just a little different. I'm pretty sure this one, 165 millimeters and uh, 50 or 60 grams maybe, is equal to the tiny clash which is like uh, I think they go in centimeters or something on it but it's I think it's pretty close the specs match up closer to it than this one which is 185 millimeters so when you measure them without the tail it's like that big one seven and a half this is six and a half this is five and a half inches but the DRTs are measured I believe with the long tail that's how they kind of cheat the system and they consider that like a uh, either eight or nine inch bait but it's because they got that crazy long tail and then in my opinion you don't even fish with that long tail you put that little short uh, sideways dude on so I'll probably keep from this size but I haven't even fished that one yet I'm gonna get out and fish these and so like in the future I'll probably keep these two but I'll decide which one I feel like you know does it even justify even having these over these it's like this is something you can go out and start with and if you get hit or you feel you're on a small bite, just go ahead and use this or this over the big one or whatever kind of deal. So that's yet to be figured out. Now, I ordered some more baits. I know. I shouldn't have, but I did. We've got about... What's chicken fried steak? Hello. Uh, I've got another bait, I believe, that's about an inch longer than this one that's similar to this uh, style. I almost bought another one of these, but I'll just wait if... Uh, I still, I think I like this one enough to I want this one and maybe even have a backup in case I lose it because it takes like two to three weeks or so from AliExpress. But I ordered a few more that are similar to this. Uh, one was $11. It's like an inch longer. Uh, I ordered a crappie colored one. I think it comes with a bill that's not removable, but it does. It's a pretty good uh, photocopy of like a crappie. Anyway, almost another hundred dollars worth of bait. Some uh, uh, rod covers. Oh, I got some uh, weights coming to uh, weight some of these. And I was going to get some suspend uh, strips from uh, Tackle Warehouse. Uh, their sale just ended today. But I ran across, and then I also read in uh, one of the things on Tackle Warehouse, the guy on there in the comments had put... Uh, don't waste your time and just get golfers tape stuff. Well, I had found that on AliExpress when I put a, uh, I don't even remember what I put in the search, but it brought up these little strips of, uh, you know, lead. They're not, uh, I think they use something, whatever, safe on uh, the, sus the storm suspend dots and strips, but these are actually lead for golfers clubs and stuff. And you get like 20 of them for five bucks or something I think you get more I think they're heavier so I think you can cut them down than what the suspend dots and strips are so anyway I got those coming from AliExpress that I'm going to try to use to weight some of these different baits I just like I talked about that's what I was talking about I want those baits on any of these baits I want them when I stop 
I want them to be wherever I killed it at and then maybe just to slowly start coming up or just you know stay suspended I don't really want them to sink but if they do I want it to be real slow and I don't want them to rise real fast I want them to kind of hover for as long as possible in that position just like when you stop it because a perfect example would be this bait wherever it's coming in at and when I stop it I want it to just sit there so uh, almost all of these baits that we're using right at this moment are more or less what you would call uh, like a cover glide type. They're not really made to be way out in real open water. You can kind of get by with some of them, you know. That one we got up there, I think it's made more for twitching, somebody commented on. Uh, so, I don't, and I honestly don't think I'm going to go any bigger than close to this area, so... This one, I, like I said, I got one coming It's about, I think it's an inch longer, but it's uh, it's lighter. So it's probably going to float. This thing definitely sinks. This thing sinks about like a rock, which I like that since it's only a $9 bait. Uh, it'll, I'll be able to count it down once I get it figured out. I, like I said, I just started using it. But I, on it is fine. You know, it, it's, it's like out there throwing it in bigger, more open water. Like, especially like on this one here, I want it to just, uh, you know, have a slower, you know, barely, maybe like a slow sink on this one. But I think a lot of these, uh, like these guys, I'll probably leave, I may even leave one alone and won't add any weight. But then one of the other ones, because uh, I have two exactly in this color, I have this color one. And for the price, you can get two of these for 23 I may buy a whole nother pair and uh, have them, you know, weight them differently or have the weights where I can just peel it on and off and get my own double, because I have double-sided tape, uh, like a whole roll of it back from the RC days, and that stuff actually holds pretty good. Uh, if it can take an RC car crash, as long as the water doesn't destroy it too fast, it can hold a big fish, grab and hold your bait and shaking it around. So anyway, that's the plan. I think I ordered these that they should be float and the, out of all these baits, I think these two were the only ones that came with the option. You could get two different ones. And I believe this is a copy of the 240, not the 300, because the 300 has like three treble hooks and it's a bigger bait. But on that brand, they're like expensive, and I think only the big 300 had the option at that time. The video I watched, where I watched a video on it, that said that you, uh, you could get the 300 in a like a slow sink or suspending or floating and these only came in the floating at the time but the websites i found both of these on they gave you the option of like a maybe it was a fast sink or slow sink or something but these are the light and i haven't even thrown them yet so i don't even have any clue I haven't put them in a tub of water or whatever and probably what i'll do is whether it be a bathtub or a sink or something i'll you know try to get these close just uh before i get out on the water but you could it's always something you can do out on the water with like suspend strip type stuff and sometimes you have to like depending on the temperature some of these things will uh kind of float kind of high and then different water temps time of the year you'll throw them out and they'll actually do a different thing same thing with like crankbaits if you guys ever notice that like your crankbait you may throw it out and you may look like it's getting down to you know shallow running crankbaits getting down to like four feet and you throw it again another time and it's like it's only going two feet deep anyway so stay tuned to that for that all that stuff's coming up in future videos uh, we're going this weekend with charles hopefully i, I don't think my big line's coming uh we'll be here by the end time because if you guys the videos you've already just watched uh up until now maybe next week or the next weekend I'm throwing with the 15 pound uh, p-line original leader so that's why I don't want to go too crazy with too big a baits I really didn't even want to throw this guy at the time I seen it as a sacrificial color wasn't really that big a deal but that thing got hit like pretty quick once I got that configuration and uh, started working it like it it had hit it made I made like one or two cranks of the real handle, and that uh, it's about a, almost four pound bass just inhaled that thing, like you know, dead.
definitely was like not scared of it was I don't I still don't know for sure if he was just hitting it to kill it or his intentions were to eat it doesn't really matter we caught it so I got a new favorite bait and color right now I still think this color or I also bought I have a bass colored one coming why I didn't order it before I have no idea but there's one uh, maybe I didn't find it in the original when I first made this order but a true bass pattern which is very close to I think it's even more of a bass pattern than this one this one is like a bass pattern but it's kind of a sketchy bass pattern you can make it out if you really look at it it looks like a bass but it's got these speckly but it even looks more of like a true bass pattern in my mind than this one right here does even and it's on the way in this size so I have that one uh, two of these one of these that's probably all I'll get for right now I got those to try out uh, I ordered I got the peel on original coming from tackle warehouse I did order, and somebody commented wanting me to get the top raider and all this and that. Once I saw the price of thirty-four dollars, I'm like, I'm just gonna get a whopper plop for one ninety for now because I just wanted a big. Since we're going big, right? I wanted to get a big whopper plopper, and uh, I got the Tekka Warehouse like one thirty colored bluegill colored one coming, and the whopper plopper one ninety in a uh, perch. I've got the P-Line Original in a 20 and a 30 pound test. And for some reason, I don't like one or the other of those. I may go with 20 with the swim baits and stick with my 15 for the other stuff. I'm going to try to go 20 with all my other gear. So basically, I'm going to try to be at 10 pound with anything kind of medium action or lighter. Anything up from that, fifth or 20 pound liter. And then 30 pound for our tequila back rack throwing the bigger baits. For some reason, if the 30, I'm just like, I don't like this crap. I may jump down to 20 for this stuff and then back to my 15 or I may be at 20 all the way across the board. Who knows? Depends on how it looks. To me, if I think the fish are seeing the thicker line or not, it's bare. And we'll compare how thick or how much thicker the 15 is over the 20 or the 20 to the 30 kind of thing. And I think I still have some 20 pound sunline sitting around here somewhere. We could fluorocarbon. We could compare that to. So let's jump right to, let's get this stuff out of the way real quick. I know I got a mess. I got a, I got a lot of stuff to do. It's short week and the weekend's coming. Gonna go fishing with Charles Saturday. Still not 100% sure where, but we will be throwing swim baits early morning and maybe midday or something before we leave or who knows what. Anyway, since we were just talking swim baits, I didn't even know they had these out. I think the last time I was at Bass Pro, I didn't even see these. But, since they had it, I bought it. Uh, they had a few different colors. They did have a bluegill when I was kind of up in the air between this one or that one. I almost bought both. And then, uh, actually, Olivia was with me. She picked this one out. So if it sucks, it's her fault. But $17.99 at Bass Pro Shops, you, too, can have this little uh, swim bait. I guess I should have left those other ones here for a split second. Just so we could have compared the size. So you get a spare tail, and it's not the cool brush tail, but it's a very, I guess call it a uh, Chad Shaddy type uh, looking swim bait. I have no idea. If, I didn't even pay attention to anything on the Bass Pro, if anybody's, ever, and I never do. I don't pay attention to what anybody's got going on or saying about anything until I actually see them in person, usually end up buying one and that kind of stuff. So, we'll get this dude with the spare tail that's already got a kink in it from being in that package. I really don't think that part matters as long as it's close to straight. So, you can see, it's definitely got, and if you guys, if I feel I need to, I could always just shave that just a hair. If I feel it needs just a little more movement. But that should be... We'll get it out. We'll try it out along with all these other baits that uh, I just had out. So to compare it, it feels within the same kind of class range. It, it looks, it's like as long, but it's got a bigger overall profile. So it should be a pretty good swim bait. We'll try it out. Maybe crap. 
who knows? They may be awesome, maybe crap, but it's seventeen ninety nine. Uh, I've talked myself out of spending anything over twenty bucks for any bait. Period. Ever again. I know I bought some mega basses at some point in time that were a little more than that. And I'm not saying I won't go back on my what I just said, but. A Chad Shad for $58, even though they were on sale right now for $50. Bucks. If I were to lose it and I need to get one right away, if I fell in love with it and I just had to have another one, there was no sale going on, the cheapest you could possibly track one down for would be $60 for one bait. They could lose on the very next cast. So I don't want to go. I'm already over where I want to go. You guys know me. I'm, I'm a tightwad when it comes to everything else except fishing stuff. I really am. Well... There's other stuff. But, yeah, I can't help it. When I uh, walk, I squeak. Unless I got the lining, let's say it. So, let's talk about what I got at Bass Pro Shops. And I'd left these out just so I knew I needed those. The Gobi Bryant. And I looked, I was just going to order them from Tackle Warehouse because I wasn't in a super hurry for them. They don't have that on Tackle Warehouse. I couldn't find any way uh, that color. Luckily, when I was at Bass Pro Shops, not even really looking for these, I saw the last pack of these Gobi Bryants, and so I jumped on them. So now we got those back. That's one of my favorite, like, uh, clearer water when I'm trying to, like, you know, it's like, let's look like a bait fish kind of look. The Deal or the Gobi Bryant or, of course, of course Purple Haze, Sprayed Grass. And then, then there's a few other ones, but usually, uh, well, of course, like a black and blue or June bug. And then our chartreuse, you know, the, then the bright ones. So, anyway, I got those. And then, just to, I don't know, I still feel I should give up on Z-Man other than those uh, Zinkers, right? The Zinkers, so far the goat cut down, like takes a lot of cutting, and I like them on the back of our chatterbaits. But really, the Zinkers and the worms, back when I was using them on Shaky Head, before I went to straight Zinkers most of the way. I tried these before, Palmetto Bugs. I never have liked these, but I bought one more pack in this color, and they have not a good selection at Bass Pro, and their lighting is horrible. I don't know if you guys have ever been to the Bass Pro Shops in Independence, Missouri. But you better bring a flashlight, a LED flashlight, one of those uh, cop uh, big spotlights. Because you can't hardly see anything. But I already knew what this color was kind of anyway. I'm going to try this out because i got a couple other rigs I'm going to show you in a minute. And I'm going to try to make myself like these palmetto bugs. I wanted to get a June bug, a black and blue, this, and, you know, a few different colors. And I wanted to also get the, and I can't even think of the name of the other uh, creature type bait. They didn't have any of those. I couldn't find them anywhere. And then it's going to be never buy them again if I don't like them or I'll continue with them. So I'm going to be basically putting this up against, I guess I should have mentioned that. That color because it's closely related to that uh, color that I have the Sweet Beavers from Reaction Innovation in. So I'm going to kind of be putting these guys head to head on because in all honesty, that color I got in the Sweet Beaver is getting hit. This should at least get a fish, or like it should come close. But from my memory, uh, I just, those palmetto bugs don't get hit near as well as like what a Sweet Beaver does. So, speaking of soft plastics, before I get to the other stuff, when you go out and the biggest fish you've caught of the year happens to be on a baby brush hog, what do you do? Go buy a full-size brush hog so you can get bigger? No. You go ahead and just invest in a couple different colors of baby brush hogs so you have more than one color. And since you guys kind of have maybe seen whether it be the chatterbaits or some of the jigs and different stuff, I kind of like that, you know, uh, this is called Alabama crawl, but basically like an orange and brownish, brownish color and then that chartreuse greenish and brown color. Like, I usually feel that when you're in, once you get in that murkier water, one or the two of these colors will they'll both stand out, but especially like low lighting, I like this kind of color or even this color. But usually one or the other of these, if it's not a natural color, one or the other of these will get hit. So I wanted to get those, and I've kind of got that natural colored one already. Then, because I want to try them on different stuff, and I'm also I've gotten so many different wobble heads over the years because it's like hard to get the uh, 
biffle head and this and that. So I've still got a couple of heads and a couple of the Strike King jointed structure heads. So I wanted to get a few more. So just to try them, and they didn't really have all the sizes in any one. So I was like, I'll just get some different ones to try. So we got a 3 16 or no, sorry, 5 16 in the true Biffle. This is, I believe, the very first head that started the whole thing. And that Biffle bug, he kind of came up with both at once to throw like that. So I do like those, but I also have liked this one. And I, uh, I don't like the half ounce. I'm kind of thinking I like 3 8 ounce or smaller when it comes to these kind of things. Then on a jig, I might go with like a half ounce jig because the skirting kind of works to slow down the fall. So 3 8 ounce, same, uh, I, they didn't have the exact color I wanted, but that, I mean, it doesn't really matter a lot. But that color, just in the greenish, darkest green, it'll go with anything. So then, I'm going to hold off on this thing. These I've been seeing here and there, the Rockin' Wobbles. So I just, they have a little bit of a different way to hold the bait on. I wanted to give those a shot and got those in a 3 16 Now they had the Biffle head in a 3 16 so I'm like, I'll just get these just to try. So we got those. We're going to be trying uh, palmetto bugs, sweet beavers, even the uh, baby brush hogs. I, I've kind of, you know me, I like to snap. So I like to just be able to snap on something instead of having to actually rig up a Texas rig. And I, I just like those wobble heads. For the smaller stuff and lighter bait, especially like a 16th ounce or 8th ounce, I like the VMC Finesse Rugby Jig, which is basically my shaky head type jig. That kind of stuff, but then I like the wobble head for once you get heavier, then I go to regular jigs. But they had this, and I don't know, uh, I'd seen it before, and I almost bought them the last time I was a Bass Pro. And I'm like, if it says Bonsai Bass, right? Bass and Bonsai is almost totally in the name of this. I gotta try it. I had to at least buy one, and it comes in different configurations. It's all the same length, roughly. Uh, the weights are different. If you look at that, they've kind of copied the Carolina rig idea as far as they got your clacking is going to be going on by... They've got the different, basically, Texas rigged uh, bullet head weights in there with the little bead. So that gives you a little bit of a clacking noise. And I mean, actually, if you wanted to, you could silence it by simply gluing it all down or whatever. But you can get these in different weights, which they change out these, and then a different hook, which they've, you know, on the hook size. So I just went with kind of in the middle. It's a 3 8 ounce, which I liked, and a 4 odd. I think you can get an ounce and a 5. And maybe even be able to get this one in a bigger, or I know I think you can get a 3 8 and even a smaller hook. But, so that, just to try it out, it's basically like what, the Tokyo Rig or something, just a longer version with a little more noise to it. So... Like, we fish a lot of places where the bait needs to be just a little bit. It actually fish a lot of places where it needs to be way up, more like a power shot. Like, a, instead of a drop shot, power shot. I've heard Gerald Swindle talk about it. And I mean, I'm sure other guys have used it before. It's basically type of a drop shot, but I think he rigs up. Uh, I can't remember which way. He basically, you know, reverse Texas rig type thing. He has the weight bullet sinker and then you know stiffer longer better you know thicker line than you'd conventionally you know normally use on a drop shot but then like a hook something like this up high and then a bigger type bait power shot basically that's what the bonsai rig with the little toss of uh carolina noise tokyo rig with the solid piece of metal line so i don't know you guys comment if you've even tried these seen them or whatever between these here and what I've already have and some of the other baits I almost bought I couldn't they didn't really have any of the goo I wanted to get the full size I've got like three different packs of the bandito bug and I still may at some point go grab a, a the color I like anyway bandito bug and then one of the uh rage bugs and kind of try those when you're wanting that more floppy over like what a kind of with the, like what a Spicy beaver. A spicy beaver, I don't know. I just think that it needs more. It's kind of like a rage, like the menace. It needs more appendages off on the side to give it a more, the profile, a more realistic look. It's got plenty of movement, but there's not enough there to, I think, for it to stand alone by itself. I think, in my opinion, 
unless you're dropping it right down beside like a you know stump or whatever the minute it's out they can kind of make it out and it doesn't look as realistic but anyway something like that it says better than salt only seen super salt plus I have no idea which one are we talking about I don't know. I see that too. Better than salt. I don't know what they're saying there. Let me taste one. Let me see what they smell like. I haven't even opened these. Nope. Smells like rubber. Eh, I guess there might be a smell there. I don't really see any salt type. You guys know I don't read anything. Made in USA. Warning, cancer and reproductive harm. Well, I have to make sure and tell the bass. Zoom's been made in the USA since 1907. Well, I've been alive about six years longer than that. All right, that's not all, that's not all. Let's go ahead with Let's just do this. This is kind of on the experimenting thing. And I know I'm, I'm about totally done spending money on the experiment thing. But I've been seeing these little uh, swim bait heads. And kind of for a few reasons. But one of the reasons, it looks like a good head design. I like the fact it's got a white weed guard and it's a white jig. And the color is just almost perfect to this Tennessee Tennessee Shad and the Largo Shad in a 3.5 inch. And this is another, this is like Brew Tank says I cost him money. Some of you guys say that. Uh, Tactical Bass and Matt Allen cost me money on this. Not necessarily this head, but these, the three and a half, not the three and not the four. Three and a half on the back of these are almost any kind of swim bait. Supposedly, it gives it just enough the movement and action. You ain't got to do the old Alabama shake and all that kind of stuff because you're throwing Tennessee, Tennessee shad. You don't Alabama shake Tennessee shad. It's kind of like putting baby in a corner. Nobody puts baby in the corner. Well, unless she's in timeout, of course. So I wanted to get one of these. I'm just going to try it. If I like it, will I buy more? I don't know. It's like $5. You guys know me. I like my dollar ones, but... I've got those dollar fifty, almost two dollar ones. Oh my goodness! With the underspins, I just needed one regular. Oh, these I didn't even pay attention. They got a black. Now I may do a little hand tie thing myself on that skirt material. I think I need to get this spun around up on top. What are you doing down there by yourself? I may rip those off. I may leave them. I may do a hand tie on that with, okay, with a red thread, and then that way it looks like a red and a gild or whatever. Tie that on. Put a Largo shad. That could be money. So then, lastly, I know I shouldn't have bought any more chatterbaits, and I got to get out of here. And then I got to edit another video tonight. I'm I'm gonna either put together a video showing all the biggest bass I've caught so far this year, or all of our bait fish we've caught since I first bought those little small ones from AliExpress. If you guys remember, I went on a tear like one day, and then I don't even really think I fished it for a while. But anyway, I don't know. I'm gonna put together probably one of those, and then I still have like five five to seven different days uh, that we fished that maybe a video or two in each one of the I'm way behind on videos that's what happens when I start going hard and heavy uh, Saturday and Sunday and then of course this weekend we went Saturday Sunday and Monday but I've been talking about if you've been watching the chatterbait videos and I can tell you right now if I'm spending over three dollars for a chatterbait that's not you know because I can get the Aliexpress ones I'm probably liking it for some reason so I bought another big blade because if I lose the one the day I'm out on the water, uh, I want to have that exact bait. And I'm going to have to 
change it. And I'm going to show you guys that in a minute. Like, I don't like it that bright. Even in, dir like, dirtier water, I'll just go to my orange or my green ones. That, that one I want to be looking like a bluegill in, you know, fairly clear water. So to imitate what I have going on here, because it's a half ounce with that huge blade, it, it has that ability. It's very, it stays kind of high and it jumps around. So I've got this one in a 3 8 ounce that doesn't do that. But so I bought a quarter ounce in the Mini Max. So if they're, maybe they just don't want something that big, right? This little Mini Max should be basically doing the same thing that this does to an extreme level that our 3 8 ounce uh, jackhammer or uh, jackhammer knockoffs do. So this in a quarter, and I'll probably trim this skirt down and then uh, put a, the Baby Rage Menace on the back. Maybe even cut it down even a little more because I want to get... I want to get this little bitty Mini Max doing that erratic dance like what I have in the bigger one in a more subtle deal. But then, that's not all. <sighs> I shouldn't have probably bought this. I went ahead and bought one more color. These are like a $10.99 or $11.99 in a half ounce. I don't think I want to go any bigger. I like these to be that erratic jumping around in your face because you can always like count them down almost like you would a swim. You know, you can count it down to one, two, three, four, five, six, or let them hit bottom, almost like you would a rattle trap, and then pick it up slowly and then jerking it for different depths. Where I fish these is usually six foot or less, no more than eight foot deep. So I think the half ounce and the jumping around in this big blade, three eighths ounce in a regular, and then quarter ounce in this, that's where the sweet spot is on those. So let me see, then I'm gonna wrap this video up. I can find those baits I had. Of course, they're all still tied on. Hang on. But luckily, tied on just means they're on. They're not tied. So I'm going to try to show you. Here's the one. So what we already have, I'm basically just kind of backing myself up with these colors because I have a bunch of the AliExpress ones. So there's the one, the first one I bought of the Mini Max, and then I added some of that color to it, but that's a bigger head. So this one definitely is like one of those. It goes down deeper. It's not as... It's got a real little blade for uh, three-eighths of an ounce, so it doesn't do really what I wanted it to do. And then, of course, I bought another one just like it, and I should have bought the quarter then, but I didn't. So that's going to give us the erratic thing with these. And these still do work. I mean, it's not, not like any, any of these in any weight will catch fish. It's a chatterbait. It's a Z-Man chatterbait. It's going to catch fish. But then, basically, this guy, I wanted to kind of be able to put up against... This is a 3 8 ounce jackhammer, true jackhammer, 3 8 ounce. So that regular blade, it'll jump around, smaller profile, but then, and it does get bit too. But then, so I basically have the same thing in a bigger bait. Uh, I'm going to do the same thing. So I, I just wanted to have that ability to have that. And they don't make this like in a B-height delight. I could possibly get one with a you know, greenish head or some point if I wanted to, to try to basically just have a very big and then a regular. Probably won't go with the lowest ones. We'll just use our smaller little, uh, uh, the cheaper Z-Man ones, whether it be the micros or the minis instead of these. So hopefully, unless we lose them all, I bought my last Mini Max for a while, my last Big Blade, uh, and then this guy, I was going to show you guys the color difference. Let me open this one up. So, whoa, something went flying. So, when I first got out and started using this one, I was kind of surprised it did uh, do a pretty good job compared to the Mini Max in fairly clear water. Actually, that day it did beat it. And I didn't change anything. I just had a, a Rage Menace on it and I had a Baby Rage Menace on... Uh, I think it was a stock Mini Max, may have been this one. But that 
loud and bright actually was catching fish but then I was out fishing it and pogue and I couldn't really get bit with it even to the point where I think it was Olivia was with me that day too she's like she called it it looks like a circus and she said I need to switch baits and so I'm like hang on so it's in the video I basically just started peeling off I ripped off all of the orange just basically by hand and then some of the blue if you guys see the blue and you got to watch like what you mean you go to look at these the I think there was a three-quarter or five-eighths or one of them and the chartreuse went way up but I took off some of the blue to get rid of some of it also to tone it down a little bit but the chartreuse that was like that long I like to take I just want it like it's been barely dipped not like an inch long dip so I some of those that I left I was just basically cutting or plucking down to where it just looks like just a tip it has some chartreuse take away all the orange so then I came up with that color and I mean you can kind of see just how more subtle there's still all the colors are there I need to spin that around super glue it because these even the hand tied ones they'll, they'll turn on you but I like the idea of just a little bit of orange right there on the bottom and I think I left a, yeah one of those is like just a shot of long chartreuse but just that little more subtle I like now should I leave one and go do a little test in you know darker water clear water and see possibly and I may do that but like if I lose it if I start getting hit with this guy and lose him that guy's getting plucked and going right to the shape of uh, color of this one but I at least have a backup now so yeah all right, guys, I'm going to end it here with the big blade talk. And if you have any questions about anything, uh, feel free to put them down below. Stay tuned for this weekend. going to be testing what you just saw here along with everything we've already used. What might possibly happen, i got to get with Charles. It's going to be hot. So we'll probably start the morning out somewhere. And when we get hot, we may go ahead... But we've had rain. We may go hit a creek, but if, if the creeks are nasty, then we're not going to do that. But it's a possibility at some point you'll be seeing some BFS. Uh, that's a plan. In the summertime, go fishing early morning. Uh, maybe call her done for the midday. Go hit a creek or stream. Then come back to maybe the same place or just a different body of water. And then if it's not too hot to where you can do a little swim baiting through the day like when the bite slows down and then just throw around some big swim baits for a little while since nothing's hitting sometimes and you got to go to like soft plastic shaky head type stuff still occasionally throw a big one out across the point you know just places that look good or you see something on bottom i've also got some uh the oh from aliexpress i've got like I said, two or three hard baits of like a bass and a crappie, but then I've got four of the mag draft knockoffs coming. A couple, you know, four different colors. They were like three to four dollars a piece. Those are going to be our sacrifice soft baits, even though they have the, and I'll leave it down below, the uh, trebles below. Uh, for that price, instead of twelve dollars each, I'll just be throwing them out. And if they do get hung up and I do lose them, it's not the end of the world. I mean, it's going to suck. I don't like losing any bait. You know, two, three, four, five dollars. It just sucks when you lose a bait. I don't care if it's the dollar fifty little cheapy cheap stuff to whatever, right? It just sucks when you get hung up and you can't get something back. It's just the thought of it, and definitely don't want to do it with these. Even these fifteen to twenty dollar baits, it's like, dude, like the LB five hundred. I about lost my mind when I lost that first LB five hundred. Plus, it was actually that was working very good. It was a combination of fifteen bucks and it was working so good, and I didn't have another one. So anyway, get out. Go bass and bones eye. Thanks for watching. I will be back uh, probably before we go fishing for the weekend with a, some sort of live stream. Maybe showing you what my game plan is since it looks a little hectic right at the moment. It's definitely going to include P-Line Original. Uh, 
as I, it's only 44 minutes, 45 minutes in. I want to talk real quick because I, I have been mentioning it. I've been mentioning it to Charles, and you guys have heard me talking about it more because Olivia caught on to it, like how often I mention it. So she started actually mentioning it in the video to mess with me about the P-Line original. But I don't think any of you guys fish with P-Line Original. I've heard a lot of you comment about, oh, I use Z-Man this, or I use this or that, or whatever. Or you're trying to talk me out of the, you know, Whopper Ploppers for the Chapos or for the Top Raiders, or for, you know, Daiwa, Shimano. But I haven't really heard anybody talk about P-Line Original. Like, that it's either ever used it, don't like it, like it, or whatever. But I'm telling you guys, that line... Uh, and I don't know why, but in the last probably week or two, I've gotten hung up and I literally could not break the 15 pound P Light and Ridge. I was pulling, holding my fingers as tight as I felt I could, my thumb on the spool and pulling, and it would not break. So uh, I think that stuff in the 15 pound test, if it does not have a nick anywhere on it, I basically put, I had the jig, I, I can't remember uh, which jig it was. I think it was the big peanut butter and jelly one. Yeah, I think it was this dude. I was fishing with Matt, it was Sunday, and I got hung up. And I was fishing with that jig right there. And I was like, oh, that's my peanut butter and jelly one. So I was like, oh, I'm just going to break it, because it was, it was down, it was deep. I put a thumb on the spool, and I put my other thumb on the spool, and I pulled as hard as I could. And it, I thought I broke the line. It bent this hook like up and popped it loose. And I, I bent it back with my pliers and it should be all right, I hope. But that P-Line original, I'm just telling you guys, it's strong. It's like a copolymer. I just like that line. And I've got 20 pound and 30 pound coming. I've already got 10, 15, uh, 15 and I believe I still have some 8 or 6 floating around. Probably 8 and 6. And one time I had the, you know, all the smaller ones up to 15. I, d I think I went from 10 to 15. I don't think I ever messed with 12. But like that, that line, especially for leader material, I feel it's, uh, it's, it's got some give. But when you're only using like a 6 foot Two, two and a half to six foot, eight foot liter. Uh, you want something with a little give over like fluorocarbon. And unless you're going to buy that expensive like shock fluorocarbon liter material, the P line is definitely that Seaguar stuff I just used. Not Seaguar, was it Sunline? The Sunline that I just used, Sniper. That stuff sucks for uh, like shock. It, I was snapping it. Like it is not, in my opinion. Like, I'm never buying any more, but $26 for a spool of that stuff, they can keep it. The P-Line Original, it's on, I caught it on sale. It's like a 500, oh shoot, what'd I get? I think it's, the 30 was 400 yards for 12 bucks, and uh, 20 pound was 650 yards for 12 bucks, I think. It's roughly the same price, and then they just... Uh, the smaller the line size, the more they give you on a big spool. And that's the only way you can really buy it nowadays from Tackle Warehouse. Just telling you, I don't know what I'm going to do if they stop making that stuff. And I can't get it anymore because I'll have to go on a search to figure out. So they don't like mono. Way too stretchy. I don't like any fluorocarbon so far I've tried. Uh, actually, just a cheap red label cigar. I think is the best to date that I've tried that I'm like, oh, this stuff's pretty good. But it's fluorocarbon. But if I had to go buy a fluorocarbon, it would probably, I would go back to that. Maybe even that cheap, that newest whatever, 101 or something that's out, just to try it. Because I don't want it to be, when when fluorocarbon, it's the kink factor. Like, like really, almost no line braid is about the only line that can almost have like a kink or a knot. You can just pull it and it comes out and it's still like as strong as it was. What I'm talking about, like when it kinks up, uh, most all your lines, whether the copolymer or any cheap fluoro to the high dollar fluoro, is pretty abrasion resistant to a certain extent. I know some are way more than others. And if you're always around rocks, I could see where you would want to invest in one that's a braze X or, you know, something like that. But for me, I just feel that as long as I check my knot and change every so often, because I use snaps and I'm bound, you know, I've known. 
And I can tell you right now, the all the rods over there for the Saturday, Sunday, and Monday I fished, I had to retie the braid to leader knot on the tequila back rack because I had a backlash and broke off the one of the Joker imitations and like 20 foot of the braid is what broke. The 20 pound uh, per barrel's braid broke before the 15 pound uh, P-line did. But the shock factor, like 20 pound braid, it's not a very, um, so that's why I bought, I already knew it. I'm going with 40 pound braid to either 30, possibly just stick with 20 pound P-line original. So as I spilled the thing on, I'm just telling you guys, if you're, if you already know what line, you're like, I love this line, and I, but I'm not going to try to talk you into it. But if you're up in there, and I don't know if I like this or that, or if you're up in there about braid to leader and why, uh, it, it can have a thing to do with, like, if you've already dead set on certain rods you like, and you're using fluorocarbon, and you have stiffer rods overall, then a braid to leader may be a bad thing, because then you're just going to be that much stiffer. But if you, it'd be something to try. Like if you, you have a rod you really love, but you feel it's almost too soft, too much stretch with the fluorocarbon you're using, it would honestly be, in my opinion, get some, some of this cheaper per barrels from AliExpress. And even if it's not P-Line Original, even if it's whatever, floor, whatever you're using, just try the braid to leader. Stick with simple knots that are good, strong, not going to fail you. If you're fishing with the Dobbins micro or Dobbins uh, uh, Ducket micro guide rod, don't even try it. Don't even try to tie on a leader. They won't go through the guides. Uh, under 10 pound test might, but yeah. So that's one concern I have. Once we get to 20 in, I know the 30, the the tequila back rack has bigger guides than the other P5s, but the P5s do have sort of a micro, small, not a true like a Ducket. But the 15, you can hear it clink in and out, but it seems like I haven't had an issue yet, so we'll find out once I get the uh, 20 pound in. I'm definitely not going to the FG knot or none of that stuff. That knot is horrible. It's too inconsistent. You can't tell 100% for sure you got it. Tied on right. Anyway, got to go. Thanks for watching, guys. Get out. Go bass bonsai. I think I already said this. Whatever you do, make sure you have fun doing it with P-Line Original.